Okay, so the next hand is 7A suited. You can see we're on the button. And we open on the button two and a half times. I, I really like this raise. I think it's a great hand to open with. The big blind's a little short because, you know, the, only, the big blind only has around 20 big blinds, 22 big blinds. And the big one's not going to call very often here. They're going to jam often. So that's a little bit risky, but I mean, I, you know, I like raising on the bottom with a very wide range here just because of the size of our stack, the fact that there's Andy. So I think 7 8 suited is a, a must raise here for sure. You can see the small blind calls. The big blind calls, again, I'm not a huge fan of the big blind's call, but that's pretty bad. Now, this hand actually, it's funny because in our session, the, the last hand we did was actually the. Uh, the, la the first hand we did in this video, that I did on this video, was actually the last hand we discussed in our session. The very first hand we discussed was this hand. And I started thinking, oh my goodness, this hand, this is not going to be a good session because this hand is so freaking obvious. Um, I can tell you right now that there's no MTT, no MTT. I'm not folding this hand. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not folding this hand on that board ever under any circumstances and I don't care what the results are. Now, I said earlier on, holy cow, uh, MTTs, you cannot just go piss away chips. Chip stack means a lot. The reason I can't fold this hand is I can't be a, behind anything but a set or a made straight. It's the only hands I can be behind. And even if they have those, I'm not in bad shape. And I kind of, you know, we poker solved it before. But basically, if you look at this, and one of my students, we actually discussed it for a long time before it was poker stove. But I'm going to show you quickly, um, basically what's happened in the poker stove. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not going to hit the evaluate button yet. Um, but here's the poker stove with basically the hand versus the worst possible scenario. So even if I had eight seven and I was facing two sets, if I was facing two sets it would actually be better than this scenario because the reason it would be better than this scenario is because if I was facing two sets, it would give them very, very few redraws versus me if, if I hit because they would basically have each other's outs. They need the board to pair. So the board pair gives them 10 outs, but they would really only have eight outs because they have to, they have each other's outs. So that's a good sign. Um, if if they have two sets, it's better actually than having a set and a mage straight already. This is the absolute worst case scenario that they have a mage straight already. So if they have a mage straight already, and I stress if this is what the odds are. So you'll see here um, we are hand zero. So you can see I got hand zero, hand one, hand two. So if you look at the equity in the pot, um, I'm actually at 33% versus the worst possible two hands like it's face in the deck and I still have a 33% chance to win. So if that is the case, you can face your worst possible scenario. Worst possible, but a lot of times your worst possible scenario you're practically drawing dead. Many times you're in the 20 percentiles because you have like a flush draw or something like that. But I am facing the absolute worst case scenario and I'm still 33%. So I could go through this whole hand and talk about the different scenarios, but I guess basically the best thing to do is, and I'm going to have to move this up so I don't spoil everything. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. But here you go. So here's the flop. Here's the bet. Uh, there's a bet. We raise on the flop. There's a jam in the small blind and a call. And should we call here is basically the answer. Well, you can see we're getting almost exactly the odds we need for the worst possible scenario. We're not going to bust ourselves from the tournament because we still have a stack. And I just think this is a spot where you have to call. Now, if we had something like A6 of clubs, I don't know, maybe not. But I think you're just going to be facing something like a draw and an overpair here so often. Uh, a draw and another overpair, you're going to be faced with um, something like pocket sevens, you're going to be faced with possibly just a set and an overpair, uh, a set and like something like A7 with the Ace of Clubs, something like that. There's just a lot of things you're going to be faced with that it doesn't make any sense to fold. And you can sit and play with Poker Store and keep looking at all those scenarios, but I just do not believe in folding here at all. I just don't think it's something you should be doing.